Hi all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna start a brand new series called the Nitro Munda series. And we're gonna start by building it up from the ground, starting with this floor tile. It's not all that difficult to do, but if you want to make a lot of them, I made nine. get the idea. If you want to make a bunch of them, it is a little time consuming and can get a little tedious from time to time, but I promise you, once you get through it, the payback is worth it in the end, all right? So I'm going to show you how to do it. The techniques are very easy, very simple. You don't need fancy equipment, fancy tools, just a little bit of patience and time. Anyone can do it. So Without further ado, follow me to the crafting table and let's get the Cromunda going, alright? Let's go guys! So we're gonna begin with cutting out a piece of foam board that is 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters uh, in width. So a square of 30 centimeters. Or 12 inches by 12 inches, depending on what you prefer. I'm gonna mark on that square uh, 5 centimeter intervals to make a grid. As you see me do here. To make sure that they align. Do that for all four sides, so on this side as well. And then we're going to draw the lines across the entire tile. And do the same for the other side as well. So we have perfect squares, which are 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. Now we're going to score them, not cut through them, be careful, do not cut very hard, go slow guys, go slow. Take your time with it. It's a tedious process but it'll pay off in the end. <laughs> very slowly. When that is done, we're going to take our ballpoint pen and we're going to score through it again slowly to make some, uh, yeah. Detail out the squares. And it will look like that when you're finished. Now the next part is a little tricky, um, we're going to start by taking half a centimeter and we're going to first mark out a line across the entire tile. It's important to measure this from the edge of each square, we're going to draw a tile as you can see me do here, draw a line I mean, sorry. And we're going to start by doing one side first. Just makes it easier. Half a centimeter. Not a complete centimeter, but half a centimeter. When that is done, we're gonna turn our tile over. And we're gonna do the same here on this side. Just uh, watch how I do it. We'll differ differentiate the uh, concrete slabs. This is this uh, part that we're marking out now will be the middle that holds the concrete slabs together. See? 
and of course we're going to do the same for the other side turning it over now we're going to do the same as we did before doesn't matter if the lines cross each other just go slow and you'll get the hang of it once uh, you've done a couple of tiles go in exactly the same way as you did with the previous one it will look something like this and then one more time And in the end it will look like this. And of course we're going to score all the lines as we did before. Do not cross, uh, just leave, just only score the concrete slabs. And then we're going to mark them out with our ballpoint pen as well. And it will look like this when we're finished. Now do that for all the tiles you want to do. And next we're going to add some detail to this. Or you don't have to, but I am going to uh, make it a little bit more interesting. Using some drywall mesh tape. Adds a little grit to the grid. <laughs> Now we're going to score, uh, yeah, cut through, through it. We're gonna, only going to leave those grid patterns on the concrete part. And we're going to peel off the excess tape, as you can see me do here. Now I'm gonna score, it, um, yeah, going to score it indeed with my ballpoint pen again. Ballpoint pen, sorry. Here I drew a circle and I'm gonna cut it out. Cut through the foam, but do not cut through the bottom piece of the paper. Just cut through it and peel the paper off and start by scraping away the foam inside. But do not cut through the, the bottom of the paper. If you do, just simply glue a little piece of paper to the bottom part of uh, the tile. Because I'm going to add some detail in this. <coughs> Excuse me. Here I have another uh, one you see me use before. It's a uh, part of a coffee cup from a uh, Dolce Gusto machine. I'm taking here some kind of, uh, I don't know what to call it in English, but you know what it is, it's those Ziploc thingies, I don't know what it's called in English, sorry. So I'm marking that to make some kind of a gutter in uh, the concrete slabs. Just cut it out with a scissor once you marked it and uh, put some super glue inside. The super glue will melt uh, part of the foam, but that's all right. It's perfectly okay. Slide that inside, and then press it down with uh, my exacto knife. Otherwise, my fingers would be stuck to the tile. <laughs> and so far, it's starting to look like something useful. Now I'm also going to take my X-Acto knife and score in a little panel, or you don't have to do it of course, but the more details you give to it, the better I think. Don't go overboard of course, but well, I'm going to make nine tiles, so try to make them a little bit uh, different each time. Now I'm having a, a sculpting tool, it's a, with a needle, it's a poking device, I'm going to use it to, uh, I'm going to use this to indent as well the panel but I'm also going to use this to make rivets 
and all the metal frames as you can see me do here. Again, another tedious process, but worth it in the end. It does take some time though. Just put on some music or watch some Netflix or uh, put on some lore videos and just don't think about it, just do it. <laughs> do try to uh, make them line up a little bit. And when you're done, it will look like this. Here I'm cutting out uh, just like we did with the circle. I'm cutting out a concrete slab. Same deal, just slice through it. Don't cut through the paper. Which obviously I did with this one, of course. But I simply glue the, as you can see here, I simply glue the piece of uh, cardstock at the bottom. Now I'm taking some floral wire. These will be some cables that will be running through the, the slab. Not necessary, but <laughs> it's a fun detail. make a few of them and I simply use super glue to uh, attach them to the cardstock that I glued at the, at the back which I cut through now I'm taking some uh, cotton swipes cutting off the cotton And I'm going to mark them out to fit the concrete slab. Here I marked it and I'm cutting away the excess part. Again, using super glue to attach it. Just trim them to size. You can do as little as as many as you want to with this, of course. Using super glue. You could use white glue, but it just takes longer. And I have nine tiles to do, so uh, yeah, speed is what I'm going for here. This is some plastic drinking straws. Could be for pipes and whatever you want it to be. Adds another detail, and there it goes. <laughs> Again, super glue. Here's another piece of that zip zip thingy. I don't know what it what it is, but it looked nice there, so I figured why not? Another detail, why not? It is the grim dark future after all, so here I'm taking some more floral wire that I'm shoving inside the drinking straw that I made as a uh, part of an exposed cable that runs to the vent. And also attach that with some super glue and here are the other tiles I made some of them I still have to punch in the rivets here I uh, added a, a larger uh, grate on it some more of those gutters and this is some stitching mesh that I uh, glued as a large grid some broken concrete more of those pipes and wires all right let's continue as you can see i added a little bit more detail in one of the concrete slabs now we're going to spray this what i did um, before spraying it i covered the sides with some regular black black acrylic paint because i didn't want the foam to melt and now we're gonna spray it flat black And that was my daughter passing. <laughs> now with the gray primer, I'm coming in from an angle and I'm dusting it. I'm not spraying it, I'm dusting it. So that uh, the black will shine through and still leave shadow areas. So dust this, do not spray it. And again, do the same with the white paint, but 
come up from directly from above using the zenithal highlight just uh, also dusting it do not spray it dust it and once that is done it will look like this creating a little nice variation in shadow and now to start doing this for all the tiles and here we're going to begin by coloring our concrete and our tiles this part actually took the longest so we're going to make some glazes not washes but glazes we're going to take a lot of water put a little bit of dish soap inside or pouring medium whatever you have we're going to start by making a green glaze some toxic color and we're going to cover the entire tile just go to town with it cover the entire piece now let it dry in the meantime do the same for all the other tiles but do make sure that you leave them completely to dry before you uh, take the second glaze to it as you can see me doing here i'm using a blue glaze <coughs> excuse me cover the entire tile also with it and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna soak up a little bit of the middle part of the concrete slabs and it will look like this once it's dry now again we're gonna use a glaze a yellow glaze this time same process again the entire tile do them all and set them aside to dry more glaze <laughs> we're gonna use a brown one this time and this time we're not gonna cover the entire tile we're going to use everything that's supposed to be metal so the the inner parts we're gonna use that it doesn't matter if it's a little weak in color it doesn't really matter it's just to tint the bottom it's okay that the gray comes through it gives it that more middle like appearance well you've seen the picture so you know how it will turn out well, it doesn't look like much yet but it will and here we go once they are dry they will look like this but we are not done yet now we're gonna start by stippling some brown paint on all the metallic parts which we just covered in the brown glaze do make sure that it is completely dry before you start stippling on this uh, thicker it's, it's just to create a, a rusty pattern it will look good in the end just start by stippling take your time I know it can take long especially if you if you have nine tiles to do but take your time and when they when they are all dry we're gonna dry brush the grate on all the concrete slabs the drywall mesh tape we're gonna dry brush it and now for the fun part we're gonna make a black wash and we're gonna cover the entire tile with a black wash tying all the colors together but also as we did with the blue we're going to soak up uh, some of the wash in the center of the concrete slabs giving that that little bit of highlight and again do this for all the tiles now set it aside to dry all right so once that is dry you will notice that the uh, tiles have warped like hell so we're gonna cover the entire back piece of the tile with some white PVA glue and a little bit of water on our brush and we're gonna cover the entire back of the tiles and we're gonna set them aside once we've done them all for at least 10 hours and that will straighten them right up all right I'm taking some Avalon Sunset and I'm gonna paint some concrete slabs in yellow. It's 
will be for the hazard stripes later on. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm taking a silver color and with this I'm gonna dry brush everything that is brown so all the metallic parts and anything that you want to be metallic just dry brush it or paint it with a, a silver color now I'm painting in the black hazard stripes when you do this uh, do a better job than me because mine are a little crooked and uh, yeah you can also of course uh, print off some hazard stripes and then just glue them on with a glue stick or something now I'm doing the same for the wires and the cables that you want to be black just paint them black here I'm just using some Abaddon black and also for a uh, little variation I'm painting in some red parts and some green parts but you don't have to use these colors you don't even have to do it just Paint whatever you want and whatever matches your vision you have in your head. Enjoy yourself, that's the most important thing. Here I'm coming in with a mood green. Make some cables, painting. Now for the fun part. I'm gonna take some pastels to make some weathering powder. So here I'm just scraping off. Goes rather easily, very easily actually. Now I'm painting on uh, just some simple water with my brush where I want the pastels to go, the weathering powder. And I'm sprinkling that on, but I'm changing my tactic a little bit further. So what I actually did was I took a spray bottle of water and I sprayed it from quite some distance, but, uh, and then I started by placing the weathering powder wherever I wanted to. I also dipped the wet brush in some of the weathering powder and stippled that on for some more rust effect. But as I said, I preferred the, the spray bottle, so I had more yeah, leaning way. Here I'm using some yellow to mark out some more rust. The brown, as you see in the bottom, is uh, some brown pastel or some grime and dirt. As you can see me do here at the moment, I'm scraping off uh, some brown. And this is where I already completed, completely soaked the tile in some brown, so yeah. So this is what it looks like. And this is some images of the finished tiles. So yeah, it, it was quite a tedious job from time to time, but I had fun doing it and I like the result. So here you can see with some terrain and some minis on it. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. It's the first episode of my Necromunda project. So stay tuned for more to come. And if you liked the video, please consider giving a like and a subscribe. It would help out the channel a lot. Thanks for watching everybody, see you next time, bye bye!